everybody and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork and with me I have Norman Sanso. Hello guys. And Silverquill. Ah, clowns! <laughs> they all float here. <laughs> they all float. They all float. And why, why, why we are talking about clowns, you may wonder, because we are reviewing one of the micro comics of the MLP micro series that we are being reviewing. That is issue five. It's the MLP uh, micro series related to Pinkie Pie, written by Ted Anderson and dra- uh, drawn by Ben Bates. Ah, in this comic, uh, we have Pinkie Pie uh, taking Twilight to a circus that just arrived to Ponyville in order to see Pinkie Pie's favorite clown, that is Poniachi. Uh, what they don't know is that this is Poniachi's last performance, and that after this one, he is going to retire because he's too old to keep clowning around and he doesn't feel like, you know, keep doing the same thing over and over every night. He's tired, he's old. He doesn't feel the same energy as he felt it before. So Pinkie Pie is sad, and in her sadness, like always, she decides to help out Poniachi to find that inner fire that makes everybody be a great clown. And even though she doesn't manage to convince him to go back to the clown business, she does convince him, however, to become a teacher of clowns. So he can keep... Uh, he doesn't have to uh, quit being a clown, but he doesn't have to perform daily, and he can teach his uh, knowledge to the future, to future generations. So that's very much what this comic is about. So what did you guys think of it? I love it. This is this comic. It speaks to me. It has the feels. Pinkie Pie is not one of my favorite out there, but. This is a really awesome comic. It makes me appreciate Pinky even more. For me, it's my second favorite of the micro series. Uh, just it shows Pinky at her best, but also at her worst. And so uh, it's a great range on the character, and also just uh, a fun, energetic Ben Bates. He he has this great trick with the eyes where he puts a little blur on the highlights, which gives them. Uh, a much more lively feel. You know, they're practically glowing on the page. And I love Poniachi's design. I love the story. It is the only comic to have spawned a song on YouTube. That's true. Although I'm not sure if the Applejack Micro has spawned a song yet. I haven't heard anything of it. I think it's more likely to have a song spawning from a Pinkie Pie comic because Pinkie Pie is often regarded as the singing pony, you know. She's the one that sung the first song in the entire series. It kind of makes sense that she will have a song dedicated to her in the in her first outing. Exactly. However, I will say this comic also takes the bell for uh, creepiest pinky face. Good grief! I'm looking at the second page of the comic. What? Just oh, the second God. page that early? That oh. early, and she's staring into my soul. Oh! Stop it, pinky! <laughs> I'm into your soul now. They all float. <laughs> this fandom like its meme so much, I wonder why nobody has made a meme out of that face. Like, uh, they want in... to sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, but, okay, creepy face aside, it really is my second favorite comic, surpassed only by rarity. <laughs> of course, because best horse is best hey, horse. You, it's, you it's always make the story. right decision. <laughs> it's a good story, not because of best horse. It is. It is. But like I say, it does have at least one moment where like, Pinky, how could you? Hmm. Which surprised me because otherwise it's like, Pinky, you are wonderful in this story. <laughs> That's for when we get to that little section. But overall, it's just a super enjoyable ride. It's a fun story. I like the character of Poniachi. I know that everyone makes the Watchmen reference when they read this comic. I'm not sure if Watchmen drew that joke from elsewhere or if they made that joke up. There is there is no way we can uh, go further talking about this comic without mentioning um, the reason why this is actually uh, happening. Because uh, the writer, Ted, Ted Anderson, he did admit that he did base the story of this comic on the joke that is told in the movie Watchmen. And uh-huh. in the comic, of course. Uh, for for those of you who don't know the joke, I will, I will tell you the joke right now. It pretty much defines the... Uh, the whole thing going on with the superheroes in that movie. 
So the joke actually ends up becoming kind of like an intentional metaphor to what happens uh, with uh, the vigilantes in the comic and the movie Watchmen. So the joke is like, it goes like this. There is this man, he goes to the doctor, to a psychiatrist. And he's like, doctor, I... Uh, I lost the joy to live. I don't. I don't want to live anymore. I feel depressed. I'm sad all the time. I. I don't feel happiness whatsoever. I want to kill myself. I feel terrible. Please, can you please tell me what to do? Tell me something to do to 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 lift up my spirits. And then the doctor is like, "Well, you can use a laugh. That maybe you need something to make you laugh, to make you happy. You know, there is this clown coming to town. His name is." Uh, Boniachi, I think it was Boniachi. Yeah, his name is Boniachi. He is a pretty funny guy. Maybe if you go watch his show, I mean, I'm pretty sure he will cheer you up. And then the man says, But doctor, I am Boniachi. Uh, it's a very gallows, very kind of like dark humor joke. It is intentionally so. It very much defines the situation where the superheroes are, and it it is what the comic is about. It's about a clown that has lost the joy to keep going. What is he going to do? And what is Pinky going to do to help him? And can Pinky help him? That's the thing. Yeah, and can he be helped? Uh, or does he even want to? So, yeah, that's that's pretty much what it is about. Uh, I didn't say what I think of it, uh, though. Should I? No, go ahead, man. In Please. A, I do have... Um, okay. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but... Pinkie Pie is capable of being the best pony and the worst pony. I agree, totally agree. With everything. And I think the best example that I can come up with is what happens between uh, Pinkie Pride and Philly Vanilli. In Pinkie Pride, Pinkie Pie is awesome. She has a lot of pathos going on. She's, uh, uh, you can see like her backstory. You see how passionate it is about making parties and how depressed she becomes when she realizes she cannot do a party compared to cheese sandwich. You feel bad for her. You, you, you feel for her. And then in Philip Vanilli, she becomes an absolute and completely unlikable jerk. And that's pretty much what happens, is that when Pinkie Pie is the focus of the story, she's brilliant. Like, she is downright, absolutely impossible to get better, brilliant. And that's pretty much what happens in this comic, is that Pinkie Pie is per perhaps the best character that she could ever be, at least for me, in that she is... She's pushy, that, that is true, She, but she also is supportive and she's able to come up with an idea that later on turns out to be very good. And also, I don't know what every Pinkie Pie comic or episode has that they always uh, tear me up because they are always so ridiculously relatable. And here's when it comes to this personal story of mine, that um, it's going to very much tell you what I feel about this comic. I had a teacher during... Um, It'll be like elementary school, okay? Uh, she was the teach. Uh, she was the teacher for us for like everything, like uh, science, math, literature, everything. Uh, because during primary school in Spain, you have a teacher that teaches you every single subject, and it doesn't go in depth uh, for these subjects, but uh, they will just teach you enough about them. And her true passion was literature. She wanted to become a writer, and she had spent so much time. Uh, teaching class that she hadn't had time to write on her novel. And we didn't know about this when we were kids, when uh, when we were like in first year of primary school. We, we, we didn't know about that. We, we were children. We were we just wanted to go back home and play with our video games and, and uh, play with our toys. We didn't care about this. But as we grew older, we knew about this. And um, during the last year of elementary school, we decided to do something for her. So we organized a literary context uh, where we would write novels of our own and at the end we like read them out loud for her just with the, with the silly intention that if she sees us being passionate about this maybe she will return, uh, re regain her passion about writing novels and maybe she will want to write her novel. Uh, silly stupid children like us, it didn't work. She she didn't take the, uh, her dream of writing a novel. Mostly because she couldn't afford it because, you know, bills, uh, unless you're an amazing writer, you cannot pay the bills with your, uh, with your talent. 
Yeah. You have to be incredibly good in order to do that. However, uh, well, this, this that I was going to jump to the conclusion of the story. That's not the conclusion of the story. Uh, uh, at the end of the year, she decided she retired. She didn't uh, kept teaching uh, on the school that I was, and she left. We kind of lost track. And then a few years later, when I was in high school and all that, uh, didn't go back to that school because I moved to another city. I was visiting a museum, and lo and behold, I met up with my old teacher. She was there with uh, with uh, with another group of students, and I was like, "Oh wow, how are you here with other students?" I I thought you retired, and she's like, "No, no, no, I I retired for a year, and but I I couldn't st- stay back from from studying or teaching anymore, so I decided to go back, and now I'm teaching literature in the in the univer- in the in the University of Madrid. I don't remember which university it was, but she was now." in a university teaching literature to other students. She didn't tell me this, but something tells me that what we did at the end of the year kind of like motivated her to go back and do that. The parallels between Pinkie Pie's story and what happened to me is like, uh, like I can't, I'm, I'm sorry, I cannot help it. I love this micro. It is, uh, yeah, with the exception of rarities, my favorite micro of the entire series. Because it gets so close to home when it comes to those fields, like uh, being, seeing Pinky trying to cheer up Poniachi, um, the dread that she feels when it doesn't work. But then she's happy because she's like, maybe no, you you shouldn't keep being a clown. You should teach other clowns. You can replace one thing with the other, and it can be the same story. I'm sorry, I, I went I went I went too far with the with the with the telling. I didn't want to take so long to, to no, no, talk no. about it. It's cool. No. Right? It's an awesome story. I mean. Listening to you and just looking at this, it really touches the feels. There's a, there's a lot to learn from this comic. I mean, I don't know how to put it in words, but... This... It's never too late to keep doing what uh, you're passionate about. Yeah, yeah, that, that. And there is always a chance of leaving your mark in, uh, in people that will come after you. Mm-hmm. That was a wonderful story, and I'm glad you shared it with us. Thank you. I'm sorry if I get too verbose. I usually get verbose when talking about something that happened to me in the past. That's cool, that's cool. For me, Pinky's at her best in this comic when she meets a pony who is feeling very sad. And even though she drank, like, five gallons of soda just to get these free tickets. Oh, God. Seriously, how is she, how is she not imploded from the sugar rush? She's super absorbent. <laughs> super absorbent. This goes beyond super absorbent. This is don't go in the ocean. You'll you'll create a desert. <laughs> but so the, she stores everything in her mane and tail. The moment she finds out that someone else needs a smile, she's perfectly willing to give up her ticket, just like that. True. And that's that's the best one of the best things about Pinky, just that wonderful generosity of and that eagerness that, that others other ponies' happiness is her happiness. Uh, which just, you know, that's part of why you adore her. That's why, even though she seems kind of annoying when you first see her in the show, you, she quickly grows on you. True. Her weakest moment in this comic, for me, was after she learns that Poniachi is uh, is retiring and she's going about how can he abandon his loyal fans, a clown who doesn't clown isn't a clown at all. Uh, that's... Well, suddenly she's no longer seeing the pony, she's seeing the entertainment. And in, in a very real way, that's a reflection on fandoms in general. Yes. We, we have a tendency to lose perspective on such things. So it's not, I'm not saying it's out of character, it's a misrepresentation. It's just something you wish she'd do better, and then, lo and behold, she does. I guess that, uh, like, in, in the basis of the hero's journey and all that, you need to put the character at the lowest in order for them to accept the situation that they are in and start to get better and improve. Exactly. Yeah, like you have to see Pinkie Pie covered in vegetables while (laughs) while Twilight is carrying her in that little cart all over Ponyville. And then until just is is like, oh, maybe I should do something about this. I'm going to do something about this. And that's when they start to recover. That's when they start to get better. It it does have all the steps of depression actually very well put together like you have denial you have uh, you have uh, rage bargain depression and finally acceptance i can't say much about this comic 
to me it's a good comic. I, I put it in my top five, probably around number three or four. And I just can't add anything to it. Like what you guys are saying is much better than what I can think of. <laughs> oh, come on, we didn't want to trample you, Norman. No, 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 seriously. I mean, all, all I can do is just say, hey, there's a song. That's the first time they did it. And the fandom latched onto it and they made an awesome song out of it. Well, again, I think this was during the season, post-season three drought, so we were yeah. eager yeah. for a little music. Oh, yeah, we were crazy for some music. We were like, oh, God, give us some music. Ah, oh, okay, here you have some music. Ah, oh, yes, music, happy, more. They're like, oh, God. Mine, mine, mine. Mine, mine? <laughs> mine? Uh, I also did, like, I, I did, like, how Twilight was there all the time, but she wasn't intrusive, yep. and she wasn't, like, judgmental about what Pinkie Pie was doing. Mm-hmm. I, 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 yeah. She, she was just helping her friend. Like, yeah. do you remember halfway through the song when Pony actually <laughs> turns around and he's like, "So I guess you're also trying to convince me of doing this." Uh-huh. And then Friday is like, "No, I'm just here to controlling the props and the special effects." Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Like just helping a friend. Yeah, she, she's I, the I might, background I, pony for this one. She's the background I might, pony. I might not agree with what she's doing, but my friend needs my help, so I'm helping. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, so I was. What did Pinky say? Twilight, how many streamers do, and uh, party games do you have? None? Great, <laughs> we'll need all of them. <laughs> uh, here, what do, Twilight, how many boxes of glitter do you have? None. And then there's the moment where Pinky is done with her song. And says, she says, so did I convince you? <laughs> her expression when he says no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just that anime-esque, ah. Oh. Yeah, that is yeah, so yeah. horrified. That is, she's totally horrified. Yeah. I mean, this is... Uh, what I noticed about this book, right, is they use a lot of anime-esque kind of thing where um, that face that Silver just mentioned, the whole zooming at high speed kind of anime look when they drew it in, or manga in this case. And, well, it fits Pinky. It, fit, it really fits Pinky for this one. I didn't think about it before, but it does have a very... Um, it has a very kinetic element to the action in mm-hmm. that whenever Pinkie Pie is, is being super hyper and over the top, it does feel like she's turning into... Um, she's like, she's turning Japanese. I think she's turning Japanese. No. Um, <laughs> I really sorry. think so. But yeah, that is true, and I didn't think about it until now. Mm-hmm. And um, who did this again? Give me a second. Um, ben Bates, he really captures it. I really feel for this one. He really looks good. And the two-page spread where Poniachi's doing his uh, Trick performance, that too, has, it oh, has, yeah. that has a lot of, even though it's a static image, you get a sense of a lot of energy to it. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah let's, let, let's talk about the art style for a moment, because this one deserves its own section. Mm-hmm. This is not... And the price level, but it is awesome. And who is the colorist? Oh, there's no mention of the colorist. But no, um, the colors in here, they work. In the first page, you can tell by just looking at it, it's different. It tells that it has energy and it feels really awesome. Even when the part where was there an earthquake schedule for today, that style, really, really awesome. Plus, we learned that ponies schedule earthquakes, though why, I can never understand. Uh, okay. <laughs> Today's really boring. Let's schedule a, a point two. <laughs> uh, point two, that's nothing. Let's schedule a point five. Let's move yeah. the house around. No, I, 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 I just figured it out. Okay, Nor, we have to uh, move your house to the other side of the street. Let's schedule a point three tonight. All right. <laughs> Point five for like point three for like fifteen seconds. Uh, go. <laughs> Here comes another equestrian earthquake. Good grief. Um, but yeah, I mean, all the uh, art, art, uh, art wise. Uh, there is almost no point on saying, oh, this is a very colorful comic, or what a beautiful looking comic. Uh, but this one kind of like grants it, mm-hmm. because you can go colorful in this comic series and go horribly wrong, like French mm-hmm. Forever number one. <laughs> you, uh, or, but in this one, it is colorful, but it doesn't get uh, sensory, ob- mm-hmm. sensory overload kind of colorful. 
like it gets colorful and it's beautiful, pretty to look at, but it's also very soft, very uh, relaxed. It's kind of like it's not histrionic level or co- level of colorful or overloaded. It has a perfect amount mm-hmm. where you don't say this is too much or this is not enough. It has a good amount. Mm-hmm. Uh, and by the way, yeah, the design of Pon Miyachi's uh, character is absolutely brilliant. Well, to me, uh, Boniarchi, when looking at him, he's your standard um, cult build, like how Mr. Cake is, except for a few features that they change. But he looks awesome. He does have a kind of like a Mr. Cake kind of look, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. It's, it's the standard uh, male build. It seems to be the one that they've uh, they've adopted more and more for uh, unique stallions. I. This is something I'm go- I'm going to talk about when I'm discussing Flash Century. Whenever oh. they name a stallion, usually he's got a body type that's very different from the standard stock. Mm-hmm. As near as I can tell, the only four stallions that have been named in the show but are normal looking are Soren, Car- Caramel, Thunderlane, and Flash, and Braeburn Five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Everyone else is either a big Macintosh or a Mr. Cake body type. Mm. What about what about um, Fancy Pants? What, where does he fall into? Like maybe in Prince Blue Blood's uh, uh, body type? Probably. I view them as similar to uh, Big Macintosh. Hmm. Really? It's yeah, pretty I mean, similar. Blue Blood, yes, They're... but um, Fancy no. Uh, who was that guy who sat on Doctor Who's snout? Um, who was he again? Sat on his snout? Yeah, in that rarity episode where everybody wanted Rarity to change their clothes because they thought they knew better. What was his oh, name? Oh, uh, Suited for Success. Yeah. Oh, um, um, Hoity Toity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hoity Toity. Hoity Toity. Yeah. Oh, wait, that, that's six standard body types. Yeah, we forgot about Hoity because, yeah, he he has this, he has the same body size as um, Brayburn and Sorin and, and Thunderlin, but... He's just... They don't use him enough. Hmm, probably, yeah. In the case of Flash, Hoity Toity, Soren, and Braeburn, they all have very distinctive clothing, which you sort of see more than the pony type. Whereas with, like, Thunderlane and Caramel, they're, you know, normal. Mm. They, they usually are going Starkers. So with Pony Ashi, he's he, he has a costume, but... We only see him in it for part of it. Mostly I see the thinning hair across the uh, flashback. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or, sorry, thinning mane. (laughs) Still works. And yeah, I mean, the redesign, oh, sorry, the design for Pony Archie, it works. Very much. In the flashback, you see he has a lot of mane, and then later on, he's growing thinner, and now he's almost balding. You can draw a parallel between this episode and A Friend Indeed, uh, because it's kind of like similar to the whole thing. Like Pinkie Pie f- uh, helps uh, a new character find the joy in life after they lost it. Mm-hmm. True, true. Although she's she's a lot more, more likable in this because you know, she's not in such a stalker mode. <laughs> not a stalker mode. She is insane. Just the wrong thing well, to upset her potential friend. Well, there's there's a difference between um, uh, Cranky and Pony Archie. The thing is where Cranky is saying, leave me alone, I don't need friends. And for Pony Archie is, oh my gosh, Senpai, please notice me. <laughs> so there's two levels of um, admiration or trying to make a person happy. And she does it, but I think she does it better here. She, mm. Although the funny thing is she had to give, uh, she had to give Cranky a lot more thought. Had mm. to put two and two and two together. And grow an extra set of limbs. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. I She's agree. a mutant, I tell ya. <laughs> well, the Equestria's the first X-Men. X-Mare. <laughs> all in all, I mean, we already mentioned the ending where hmm, Pinkie Pie suggests to Pony she he becomes a clown teacher. So, uh, I, I think we already reached our limits. So, James, what do we do now? Well, the thing is that I don't think that it's... Like, like in the pirate arc that, that uh, we were talking about last week mm-hmm. uh, there is not much going on in terms of story the story is very simple is that this is um, 
this is what happens with this sh- with these shows sometimes is that it is the character that drives the story forward. When mm-hmm. you have it, and it, it seems to be you know it's it, it is something that I've noticed. It seems to be the the blight on pop culture right now, in that you cannot have both things. You either have a really good story or really good characters. You cannot have a really good story with really good characters. Oh, that's not good. You, you, you can't. And it's not just to Pony. It relates to everything. And I can stay here for like hours talking to you about other pop culture things that have either great story or great characters, but they don't have both. And I can dedicate an hour entirely just to talk about Christopher Nolan movies. Oh, God. <laughs> so, in this case, this comic, and almost every single comic that we are reviewing, it is great for the characters, mm-hmm. in that it's great to see the dynamic between Pinky and Twilight, but also the, dyna- the dynamic between Pinky and Poniachi, mm-hmm. in that uh, Poniachi has been inspiring uh, Pinky Pie all of his life. And for once... The, the tables turn and in the, at the end of the comic it's Pinkie Pie the one inspiring Poniachi mm-hmm. so it is it is a a gorgeously well crafted incredibly good looking uh, pretty colorful well written and uh, to its soul based beautiful beautiful comic in that uh, if you feel down or anything you pick it up, you read it, and you're like, I feel much better now. True that, yeah. true that. Although there are two minor things in the comic that might be worth just mentioning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. First first is uh, on the page where Pinky first gets her idea to try and inspire Poniachi, where she says, how many boxes of glitter do you have? <laughs> yeah, none. T- top of the page, on the left side, big, big panel... You see a pink mare with a blonde mane oh, yeah. and what looks like her, her colt. Look at the expressions on them and how sad the kid looks oh. and how concerned the mother is. Which, uh, which page again? It's uh, uh, what? James Give me a second. That will be page 16 for us. Page... Yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm reading from the trade paperback, so it's 144 for, 114 for me. Okay, page yeah. 16, you yep. say? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So right there, you look at that, and you think, what's going on with those two? What could what could be causing that expression? And that's something the show itself has done really well, that it inspires this curiosity about the world. You see a pony with crossed eyes. Oh, did she just say muffins? <laughs> you see uh, a stallion eating a hay burger and looking kind of sad as he does so. <laughs> you see, you see a, a mint. Green pony hanging out with uh, with another pony with like blue and pur- blue and pink curls on her hair. Are they friends? Are they together? Mm-hmm. Yes, that's that's something this show just does. It invites people to be curious about the world just happening in the background. It feels alive, is what you're yeah. saying. Is that the world in this in this uh, universe? It feels populated by all sorts of living pe- living yeah. beings. True, 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 true. Which is which is also why I sometimes get harsh on the main six click being uh, too tightly bound that they kind of ignore the rest of the world when there's so much opportunity there. Well, and and one of the things I really love about this comic and the micros is that they're interacting with other characters in the world. They're interacting with Poniachi, the librarian, the hippie ponies. You know, they're getting a little bit... They're reaching a little farther than the show does sometimes. Yeah, you realize that actually the comics, the micros, were doing something that then Season 4 was doing. Because uh, with the with the Rainbow Power storyline, you have something very similar. The way that uh, uh, Rarity inspires Coco, the way that Pinky inspires Cheese Sandwich, uh, the way that Rainbow Dust changed the perspective on the Wonder Balls, or how Fluttershy is able to influence Seabreeze, the or when Applejack... Is uh, capable of like kind of like unintentionally talk Silver Shield out of his uh, dying ways. Yeah, exactly. And that's why the Rainbow Connection arc was my favorite. Mm-hmm. Uh, just that it let it let us see the ponies in the world. And the truth is, these ponies aren't their best when they're helping someone. Mm, true. Then ah. again, you also have to you also have to take into consideration that. Uh, 
um, when you have your your circle of friends, and when you have the 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 group of friends that you that you know, it does take a little bit. At least, okay, for me, for me, I'm going to talk from personal experience. I'm not going to speak for anybody else but me. Is that it takes me a lot of time to uh, accept talking to someone else that is outside of my circle of friends. So I can kind of understand what's going on with the dynamic. Besides, it does simplify uh, the task of writing a screenplay. Mm. Oh, true, uh, true. Because when you are under time constraints, you have to take into account, okay, how many characters does Twilight Sparkle interact with on a daily basis? She interacts with uh, these five ponies, uh, Spike, uh, perhaps Princess Cadence in the rare occasion, and maybe Discord. Uh, Princess Celestia a lot less than in season one and two. That is true, but mm. these are all the characters that Twilight interact. Okay, so we just have to build from those relationships, and that's it. And if you realize the, the, I'm not saying that you're not right. You are completely right, and they should explore this even further. But for simplicity's sake, it's kind of brilliant because you know that the little relationships that you have, they are very well written relationships. Oh, true, true. When someone knows a character, they they have to well kind of write them like they've been friends forever, and yeah. with the Rainbow Connection and even some of the micros, it's a story of where, hey, what would happen if this set character interacts with this set of character? Like what Dave Polsky says in on his panel is the thing of what would happen and wouldn't it be cool if. So, yeah, I don't blame some writers sometimes when they try something out of the norm and breaking out of the main six. We got Coco Pomel and uh, Seabreeze and whatnot, so that's a good addition. No, she's sandwich too. Yeah. And I hope they carry that forward in season five. I'm not saying break apart the the main six as friends. Just let the circle expand a little so that if they could learn and help other ponies. Oh, I, I totally agree. You know, yeah. even even with that, I would like to see something that... Uh, okay, I am surprised that after four seasons, we only had an episode that focused almost exclusively in the relationship between Applejack and Fluttershy. Mm. That was Bats. They oh, are both yeah. part of the main six. They are both the main... They are main six, both of them. We never had an episode focused on them. Mm-hmm. And how they interact with each other up until season four. It took them seven, no, how many episodes? 26, 52, 60, 65, no, 60, 71 episodes. It took them 71 episodes to deliver an episode focused on two of the main six. And after, uh, before that, there hasn't been that much interaction besides the whole let's save Equestria or, or let's be together in the same shot to show unity. Yeah, yeah. So what I unity. Like, unity. So what I like to see in in season five is uh, more of that, more of the characters that have been already established. But let's see the relationship between them when we haven't seen them together before. Like yeah. something that Friends Forever does very much. Like mm-hmm. uh, it's one story focused on Pinkie Pie and Applejack, another oh. one focused on Fluttershy and Sakura. Uh, let's see more of Shining Armor and Twilight, please. Let's true, see yeah. them more as brothers, brother and sister. We haven't seen enough of that. Mm, true. And also, no, we haven't. Yeah. And also one episode where it's just Spike and Celestia. I mean, yeah. th- that's a rare combo. Yeah. Well, it, it will be great. Like, you don't need to bring... Like, it, it is good. It expands upon the world, bringing in new characters. But you don't need to bring new characters to make it work. Like, remember when I said that it simplifies... The uh, uh, the writing when you have a rooster of characters that it li- is limited to six or seven. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So there are many relationships between all those seven characters that you can explore. Like we had an episode focused on Apple on Applejack and Spike. Why not having an episode focused on Spike and Rainbow Dash, for example? Mm-hmm. True that. We haven't seen any of that yet. It's an example. It's a random example. True. I mean, I, I love to have this conversation with you guys, but I think we are r- we the train derailed a long time ago. So we did, um, we did derail, yeah. we did derail. But yeah. it's a very interesting conversation that is worth talking about. Yeah, true. So if it's you, what we do, yeah. <laughs> if you guys can remember it for the next time when we do a show something like this, we should use it on the normal show where we have hours and hours to talk about it. But let's end this one because. I'm sure that all of us agree that we love this. Oh, yeah. 
I think it will be one of those rare occasions where everybody agrees that this comic is just fantastic. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And well, there will always be someone who doesn't go for it because it's a diverse world. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, everyone has seen you. Uh, the three of us. The three of us. The three of us. Yeah. All of us. Yeah. yeah, like all of us in this call, we all agree this comic is fantastic. The mm-hmm. same way that Rarity's micro is the best micro because oh, best agree. Money, rah, agree. Rah, rah. Um <laughs> I agree to the part where it's a good comic, but not to the rarity part. It's it's a very special pony, very special pony, very special. Meanwhile, I'm still sad that my favorite pony had a pretty difficult run. Yeah, I, with her with her micro. Yeah. It does suck. It sucks. Like when when season three started, I hated the hell out of Fluttershy. Uh-huh. After seasons three and four, no, really, I hated her. I hated Fluttershy. Now after seasons three and four. She's like my third favorite, right after uh, Rarity and Applejack. Well, I, I nice. don't blame you. I, I don't blame you because it, yeah, putting your hoof don't hurt me a lot. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, personal personal feelings aside, that one was. I don't know. I cannot I, see I, through. I cannot see through that episode. I'm yeah. sorry. I, I like it, but more the more I think about it, it's. An episode where yeah, Fluttershy is shy. How can we go? How can we go in one episode from "Come on, every pony, smile, smile, smile" to two bits, one bit, two bits, one bit, one bit, <laughs> two bits, one bit, <laughs> two bits. So yeah, it's sorry, consistency, please. Uh, that episode, that it's unwatchable for me. I cannot. I cannot. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, um, that aside, um, should we end this, James? Yeah, 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 let's end it. Okay, final verdict on Pinkie Pie Micro of the My Little Pony official release. Great comic. Great comic, you agree? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. Agreed. I agree. Fantastic read, beautiful beautiful looking, fantastically well written, uh, uh, f- charged with feels, and just downright awesome. Mm-hmm. And we recommend you guys to give it a, give it a read. It is definitely worth your time. Yep, I would. So, I would go far as if you were to buy a physical copy, buy the Rarity Micro and this one because it's worth it. If you want to get the yeah, or or you can do like Silver Quill and buy the the Trade. one that has all of the main, all six. of the main six micros Mm-mm. together in one. Oh yeah, yes, that, indeed. I did that, but with the other. I did that, but with the underdogs. You know, the, the Celestial Luna, Spike, and the Crusaders. Yes. Right. Wait no, seven to ten. My bad. Sorry, seven to ten. <laughs> but, okay, uh, so that is for this week's episode review I mean, comic review Oh, shit I completely misread that uh, Next mm. week, what are we reviewing next week, Norman? Well, next week we are going to review Well, the Bookworm arc Which is a drama to itself <laughs> Oh, God, that one is going to take a lot I, uh, I don't think nobody is going to like us on that uh, are, are they, Silver? Yeah. Well, it's okay to not like something. It doesn't mean you dislike the show or the comic. It just means, yeah, I thought this could have gone better. Yeah. <sighs> we we have opinions, no matter how right or wrong it is. Diana oh. Star Guardian is in the comic. The <laughs> best comic ever. <laughs> no, not really. Anyway. But we, we have that comic, and then not long after comes the Applejack Micro. Oh, God, no. That one is going to be a blood. Bath. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, Silver. Can, can we have range. a prediction from you? Can we have a prediction from you? This one is okay. The Rainbow Dash Micro was the Universal Meh. What is meh. going to be for the Applejack Micro? Well, uh, from what I've heard from you guys, it's going to be the Universal Ah! <laughs> oh my goodness! I'm going to get very mad on that episode. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well then, we'll have something to look forward to. Get, get your popcorn, people. It's going to be a bloodbath. I'm going yeah. to try and keep it down. I don't want to become like an, uh, a super angry one, but expect me to go spoony and screaming, Betrayal! <laughs> Betrayal! Betray me! Betray me! <laughs> but now, Okay, that's it for this week's uh, comic review, everybody. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you for not switching off the video and going to watch something else. Um... But really, if you want to watch something entertaining on YouTube, go watch Markiplier. He's hilarious. I didn't know you were plugging ROM. If you want to watch something entertaining 
uh, go watch Markiplier too. But if you want to watch something informative and full of bickering, watch our videos. They're funny. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> and if you did watch um, Silver Quill's final season review, um, Twilight's Kingdom, and wanted to know more of his opinion, you could always check out our review of that one because he was there too. Edition bonus, yay. Yes, indeed. Yes. So you can find out a lot about my opinions on comics if you check uh, my reviews and also the archive of the NBS show. Yep, yep. Because I'm here. Yay. He's always exactly. be here. Always. And if you are busy working or, like, you know, drawing like I am right now and you cannot keep looking at the video at the screen or all the time, you can simply watch our, uh, our podcasts because they don't have video. It's all audio. So it's good for you. True, true. Except for episode 129. There's video there. There is a little video there. Yeah, yep. with some Spanish jerk in it or something. I don't know. Yeah, probably. That, that no guy, idea. he should get out. Of, he should get out of the camera. He's just ruining the shot. <laughs> probably. Uh, anywho, James, take us out. Well, yeah. Uh, well, that's the end of this episode. I have been James Cork, and I am Norman Sanzo. And I'm still scared of clowns. <laughs> <laughs> we all are, Silver. We all are. Aha! 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 <laughs> they all float here. They all float. Anywho, I'll play us out with the song that is in the comic. See ya, guys. Pony Archie, Pony Archie, what's got you so blue? You're tired of performing, so you think.